Coming up on NCC News, Amazon hires a team of robots to reduce workers' stress and fatigue. We learn about the hit song, Selfie, and we'll find out why these people are so excited after these messages. I fainted at the sight of blood. Me, a nurse? I had no idea that's what I'd be when I went to NCC. But NCC is not like other colleges. NCC has a student success center where counselors assist every student in creating a future. I'm so happy. Nurse Robbins, I created that. Be who you want to be. Create your future at NCC. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. I'm Alex Ravello. And I'm Nat Sandberg. Have you ever wondered who has been preparing your packages from Amazon? NCC has the story. Cyber Monday is Amazon's busiest day of the year as online shoppers hope to scoop up the best deals on the web in time for Christmas. In 2013, Amazon reported 36.8 million items sold worldwide, a company record and expects to surpass that number this year. To help get its products off the shelves and shipped in time, Amazon is employing the help of 15,000 robots. The Kivo robot looks like an orange oversized Roomba and brings the shelves to the packers rather than having the packers search the warehouse. The company says the new technology cuts the process from hours into just 30 minutes. Mike Squires, NCC News. If you like Taco Bell, I got news for you. Recently, the branch has developed an app. Let's go to Michael Squires to hear more. Want Taco Bell pronto? There's an app for that. The restaurant unveiled an app today that allowed patrons to place customized orders using their iPhones and Androids. You still have to pick up your food in person, but you get to skip the line. The app communicates with your phone to know when you're near the store so workers can prepare your meal. You are able to customize all items available on the menu and then are easily able to check out and pay for your meal using a debit or credit card, all on your iPhone. You can download the app using the App Store for iPhone and the Android Market for Android phones. Recently, Honduras received the world record for having the biggest Christmas tree. But it's not exactly as you think. Let's take a look. You heard right. Honduras received a Guinness World Record on Monday, and just in time for the holiday season. Almost 3,000 people dressed in red, green, yellow, and brown attended this event. The event was to create the largest human Christmas tree. The citizens of Honduras gathered outside the presidential house in the nation's capital to attempt this. President Juan Orlando Hernandez received the official certificate from a Guinness representative. Hernandez said the record was officially amazing. All in all, it took them several hours to get everybody in place and take the pictures they needed. After evaluating and verifying the numbers, Honduras received the Guinness World Record. This has been Mike Squires of NCC News. Tragedy has happened recently. On takeoff, a rocket exploded. Michael Squires has the details. Five, four, three, two, one. Seconds after the launch from the Wapos Islands in Virginia, the unmanned Antares rocket exploded. The explosion could be seen miles away. 
Jay Bolden, a NASA spokesperson, tells CNN there was no indicated loss of life. There was significant property and vehicle damage. Mission Control is trying to assess what went wrong. And launch team, launch team, be advised, stay at your consoles. Everyone in the LCC, maintain your positions in your consoles. In the LCC, maintain positions at your console. The Antares rocket was on a mission to deliver cargo and experiments to the International Space Station. What if a student from your school won a reward for making four basketball shots in a row? Well, that's what happened to this young man. A Bryan College student in Dayton, Tennessee won $10,000 after sinking four shots in a row at a basketball game. The student, Gustavo Angel Tomeo, made a layup, a free throw, a three-pointer, and a half-court shot all on his first try in under 30 seconds. Tomeo is at his college on a soccer scholarship and says he doesn't even take the throw-ins for his team. Tomeo already has his tuition paid for his senior year and he's reportedly feeling generous. The Times Free Press reports that Tomeo said, everyone wants a piece of the pie, so I guess I'm just going to hand out one dollar bills. We are surrounded by talent throughout the state. We had a chance to sit down with a Stanford High student to see what he is up to. Let's meet Devin Miller. The state of Connecticut is filled with a lot of talent. Recently, we found a student at Stanford High who is a musical artist. This artist's name is Devin Miller and he's a rapper. Devin has been working all summer to create his album, Living Out Loud, and recently created hard copies. We sat down with Devin to talk about his album, Living Out Loud. Living Out Loud is quite the project. I want to say it was about six months in the work. You know, and ever since we put out the video for Pumped Up Kicks, it just, it, it became crazy. We knew it was going to be something special. You know, I, I was working with Squires Entertainment. I was working with, working with my uh, audio engineer, Chris Berg. It turned into just something absolutely beautiful. All 14 tracks were just so personal, and they each have a story behind them. And honestly, I'm, I'm very happy with how it came out. And, couldn't be any happier with it. My inspiration for rapping, I'd have to say, honestly, I mean, I was obviously inspired by like my rap idols. You're talking like Eminem, you're talking the Beastie Boys, like going way back. But I think the moment when I really wanted to be a rapper, I was uh, with my boys one night, and we were just writing raps for fun, and it was like ten of us. And out of all of them, I had the best one, and I sort of liked it, and I I just rolled with it, and I, I put out some okay songs along the way, and it eventually turned into what it was today. So I guess. My inspiration is really just that one random rap that I wrote back in the day. If I had to pick three, I'd say the first one is definitely going to be Scooby. Uh, it was the first song I wrote on the album once once Squire sent me the beats, and I just remember going over to his house after I after I wrote it and watched him have a ball with these lyrics, and it really set the tone for my entire album. It was it, it really just gave me the drive to keep going throughout the entire thing. It, it, it essentially made Living Out Loud what it is today, and I'm really blessed for having wrote that song. I'd say the second song is definitely going to be Long Nights. First because it, it sort of came out of nowhere. It was one of those beats we got in last minute. It was one of the last songs we recorded. But Deshaun really killed it on that hook. And he, he put the song together and he, he really made it what it was today. It made it sound just so professional and so clean. And I just really like the vibe it creates. And the last song is probably going to be uh, Cruise. Just because of how unique it is. It's, it's not country rap, but it's, it's a country sample. And I just... I like it. It's American-esque and it's, it's everything that I was sort of feeling at the time and that July 4th release really reflects upon what it was and I just like how it looks in the scope of the album. Promotion for the album is going to be crazy. On top of posting on like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram like we do almost daily, we've got at least five videos coming in the works. We're talking to blogs about getting some coverage. Uh, we have hard copies and flyers that we want to roll out ASAP. And we're in the works of talking to a particular radio station about maybe getting a little interview time on there as well. Forward, it's really just getting right back to the music. I, I plan on putting out another tape. It's definitely not going to be a one-tape wonder here. And it's really just keeping with the music. You're going to see a lot from me soon, and hopefully you keep your heads up for me. This has been Mike Squires of NCC News. A salon opened up in downtown Bridgeport. NCC News had the chance to visit Lavone and get the story. 
there's a new salon in town, and Mr. Levon is responsible. We got to sit down and speak with Mr. Levon about the grand opening and the party he is throwing to celebrate his newly owned business. Hello everybody, this is Mr. Levon from Salon Levon International. Listen, we have made it. We have done four hair shows and we are finally here at 1681 Park Avenue here in Bridgeport. I want to take this time and this opportunity to invite you as my special guest. We're having a party, a bash, a celebration at Salsan E Mamba. We're going Latin, y'all. Oh my goodness. Listen, so come and be a part. We have VIP, we have food. All of that's coming together, and I'm inviting you as my special guest. So come and party with us like no other party. You must be there October the 10th, so I hope to see you there as my special guest as I grab some of the cast and some of the members and some of the crew here for the salon together. We're here to invite you. Come, please, have a good time with us. See you soon. The salon's grand opening is on October 10th, 2014. This has been Mike Squires of NCC News. NCC has a lot going on around the campus. NCC News had a chance to sit down with the newspaper club and talk to Peter Volandis about the cafes at NCC. Yes, and we talked to a student working with the New York Knicks, and for students interested, we have a short story about the transferring to another college. We check all these things out after these messages. You're watching NCC News. All right. I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. What college are you going to? I don't know. What do you want to be? I don't know. My parents want me to be an architect. Architect? Yeah, but it's my future. I want to do something that turns me on. What turns you on? I don't know. We know NCC has a student success center where counselors assist every student in creating a future. You'd make a cute pirate. I don't know. We know. Be who you want to be. Create your future at NCC. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. Ever wanted to write for a newspaper? Well, NCC has a club for that. Let's go to Mike Squires with the inside scoop. Love writing and looking for a club to join? NCC has its own newspaper they produce. And guess who runs it? Students. NCC News sat down with the club to find out more. At The Voice, what we do, we sit around, we discuss um, topics, um, what's happening in the media, um, in the outside world. Uh, we discuss um, what's happening here on campus, what's taking place, uh, what's new and upcoming. Um, we discuss what articles uh, that we like to see in each issue, uh, who's going to go out and get the articles, uh, the information for each article. And we do a variety of things. We do music reviews, movie reviews, game reviews, um, heard in the halls, which is just going around and asking people about a particular question, getting their answer, um, photo essays, features, opinion pieces. I mean, it. we have a lot of variety in our paper. Here in The Voice, we uh, look for stories around campus, and we have our meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m., and basically what we do as editors, because there's four editors on The Voice, I, like I said, I'm the news editor, uh, we edit people's work. We read everybody's stories and then we basically are the ones that are in charge of editing everyone's work and then choosing what pieces actually go into the newspaper. Well, there's the process of uh, 
getting the interviews and everything in, which usually can take within a week to do. And then after you do that, you would have to take between a day or two in order to write the story. And then after that, it's another week. So between a week and two weeks, depending our um, our deadlines. But usually the minimum is about two weeks in order for us to get the interviews, write the stories, um, edit the stories, and then revise them and get them into the paper. Each issue takes about two weeks. We have... Uh... We meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll do, let's see, we'll do a meeting where we talk about stories. Then we'll have another week to work on our stories. We'll have copy edit night on a Tuesday, on the following Tuesday, and then we'll have press night that Thursday. So about two weeks. You can join The Voice by looking at papers posted all over the school campus. Um, we meet Tuesdays and Thursdays in e room East 115. This has been Mike Squires with NCC News. The cafes offer a variety of food at NCC, but have you ever wondered about the man behind it all? NCC had a chance to speak with Peter Volandis and to see what he was about. Peter Vlandis, owner of Norwalk's Community College Cafe, says to find what you love to do and do it. For him, his love is culinary art. He started out as a busboy washing dishes and now is the owner of two successful cafes, the East and West Campus Cafe. Through all the success, Vlandis has tried different methods of getting business. One of these methods consists of free samples. Vlandis states, I try to give free samples out as I feel necessary. At first, I was skeptical. But it helped sell the food, and overall, it was a decent experience. NCC student Gavin Rowley always says the free samples persuade him to buy the food. Overall, Vlandis is happy with the experience of owning the cafe. He has found what he loves to do, and he's doing it. The menus feature an assortment of foods from breakfast sandwiches to chef salads, and is open Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and on Fridays, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is Mike Squires, NCC News. We have famous people on campus, and we got to sit down with one of them. Nicole works with the New York Knicks, and we got to hear her story. Here at NCC, Nicole Nacera seems to be making her way in the world of sports media. We sat down with her to get the scoop. My name is Nicole Nacera. I am a NCC student. I am the editor-in-chief of the paper, and I write for Bleacher Report, which is CNN Sports Division, and I also do the social media for the New York Knicks, so I do all the Facebook and Twitter um, updates for the New York Knicks. I started as an intern. Um, I did an internship with them three years ago already, wow, three years with the Knicks already. Um, I started in their summer league in Las Vegas. Um, all I did was... Uh, fill out an application. Um, they asked me for my portfolio of my stuff on Facebook and Twitter and I do a lot of Facebook and Twitter so I gave them all my stuff on Facebook and Twitter. Um, they gave me a shot uh, after my internship was over for the summer. They, I asked them if what the next step was and they gave me the job as the social media expert as they call it. Um, and I've been doing that ever since. The great thing about the New York Knicks is that they understand how my schedule is. Um, if I have too much work for classes, they're like, okay, you can take the day off and you can work, you know, you can concentrate on your schoolwork. Um, yeah, it's not really easy. You just have to have a lot of time management. My English classes have helped me the most. Uh, NCC has given me the foundation, NCC is, itself has given me the foundation of having a great education um, and learning how to interact with people. You know, they give you a lot of opportunities that a lot of schools don't. I'm originally from New Jersey, I've taken classes in New Jersey. And when I was in New Jersey, I was going to a big four year institution and you were just a number. At NCC, it's more student-based, so you have more interactions with your professors and faculty. This has been Mike Squires with NCC News. 
Ever consider transferring? Sacred Heart University might be the place for you. Michael Squires has this story. Are you an NCC student looking for a place to transfer? Well, Sacred Heart University might be the place for you. John Benedictus came in as a guest speaker to elaborate on the benefits of transferring from Norwalk Community College to Sacred Heart University. My name is John Benedictus, and I'm with Sacred Heart University. And one thing in particular that Sacred Heart offers transfer students from Norwalk is an articulation agreement, which essentially guarantees that all of your credits from NCC at the 100 level or above will transfer to Sacred Heart University. Furthermore, we will accept up to 66 credits from Norwalk to put toward your degree at SHU. I speak from experience. When I was right out of high school, I started at Norwalk Community College as a student for two semesters before transferring to Sacred Heart, where I would ultimately earn my bachelor's and my master's, and I'm an employee there. This has been Mike Squires of NCC News. The Academy of Information Technology might be the school you want your son or daughter to attend. And we learn about a change the Girl Scouts are making. Yes, and we'll find out who's running Tuxedo Junction and get a better understanding of the selfie song after these messages. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <laughs> Michael Adams? Here! Michael Adams. Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Mike Squires of NCC News visited the Academy of Information, Technology, and Engineering to get a better understanding of their mission. Let's find out what they and their about their news documentary. The Academy of Information, Technology, and Engineering continues to provide students with an exceptional educational experience with an emphasis on 21st century skills and a focus on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. This mission is accomplished through a student-centered, technology-rich, smaller learning environment. I came to AIT to better understand technology and to better enrich my engineering skills. I came to AIT because I was interested in film and script writing. I came to AIT to better improve my skills of being an engineer. I came to AIT to improve my technology skills and to learn more about biomed. I came to AITE because the engineering program will help me to further my education and my career. I came to AITE because I feel that the world is shifting into more of a technology and engineering gear, so I feel like it would be very useful in the future. I came to AITE to further my education in the biomedical field. I came to AITE to pursue my knowledge in the field of engineering and technology. The curriculum at AITE is student-centered and technology-rich with an emphasis on 21st century skills and a STEM focus, preparing our graduates for college and career readiness. We understand that it's the 21st century. Here at AITE, every student is given a laptop computer to assist them in their educational journey. I really like the laptops. I think it's the best part of our school. Um, you have an unlimited amount of resources, and you're definitely never bored because there are so many things to learn with the internet. Um, you don't have any trouble with it at all, and taking notes is really efficient because you have everything in one place. 
you don't have 50 million binders or newspapers or anything like that. The AITE experience guarantees a diverse student body, faculty, and staff, professional, dedicated, and caring educators, 88-minute classes organized in an alternate day block schedule. With the 88-minute courses, because they're longer, instead of going over a topic superficially, it allows the teachers to really go in depth and you do a lot more work with it. And because it's like all around together, you get to do a lot of branches while everything's still fresh in your mind. Instead of, say, going to class one day and then kind of forgetting it for the next day to so the next after that. One-to-one -one computing, the integration of technology in all areas of curriculum, world language offerings in French, Latin, Spanish, Mandarin Chinese, and Arabic, the nationally accredited Project Lead the Way program. Project Lead the Way Biomedical Science is an amazing program where students are able to learn um, different realistic situations in science. Students have an opportunity that's way far beyond what I've ever thought we could do, but we've always wanted to do. Um, they have a chance to look at different professionals, from being a nurse to being a lab technician uh, to being any different type of doctor. Um, and we really do try to promote many different opportunities for them so that they get a chance to see what they really like and what may not be a good fit for them. Career concentration options in the areas of information technology, biomedical science, architecture and pre-engineering, business and fine arts, project-based learning, student-driven extracurricular activities. So there are definitely a lot of clubs and after-school activities that you can do at AIT. I personally am a part of a bunch of them. I am the senior class president, so I do a lot of after-school activities regarding student government, including fundraising and just um, organizing activities for all the seniors and the school to participate in. I'm also the uh, one of the co-presidents of Science National Honor Society and Art Space. That's the good thing about AITE. Even though we do not have specifically our own sports team, because it's a magnet school, we are allowed to, students are allowed to do sports with their own district school. Media Innovators Club last year. Um, it was a partnership with It's Relevant Stanford, um, which is a uh, sort of journalism website. Um, and we were able to get a feel for what um, digital journalism was like. Community service opportunities. Advanced placement courses. Yukon Early College Experience. Partnership with Norwalk Community College. Virtual high school courses. Work-based experiences and internships for qualified students. Students at AITE have big opportunities in a small, caring environment. They also get a world-class education in a public school setting. Let us help you follow your dreams. 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 AITE is an award-winning school and most recently was the 2013 recipient of the prestigious National Magnet School of Distinction Award. AITE boasts of one of the highest graduation rates in the state and continues to fulfill its mission to prepare students for college and the global community. Discover how AITE is empowering its students to shape the future. Tuxedo Junction, a music venue where famous bands and artists have played. But what if I told you it was under new management? NCC's Michael Squires has the story. Tuxedo Junction, one of the most famous music venues in the state is now under new management. Ian Bick, a 19-year-old is now in charge. NCC News had a chance to sit down with Mr. Bick to get a better understanding of Tuxedo Junction's mission. When I was a sophomore in high school, I was doing teen nights at Tuxedo's and we were pulling in anywhere from 900 to 1,000 kids at a time. And uh, we built a brand for ourselves. It was called This Is Where It's At. And we just figured why not name it This Is Where It's At because that's where our parties were going to be where it was at for the night. And uh, that really kicked things off and it put me on a path to follow the whole entertainment market 
and we started getting into concerts. We've been working really hard to reinvent the name Tuxedo Junction from a seedy nightclub to a live music venue. We're pulling in artists that are currently headlining ADC, that are currently on top of the music charts for rap, for rock, for R&B. We're really taking in people who are on top of the game right now in the music industry, and we're bringing them to Danbury, Connecticut, so people in the area can stop traveling to New York City, can stop traveling to Boston, and stay in their community for an amazing live music show. Success to me, that, that's a hard one. I don't know if I've ever really experienced true success yet. Uh, I've had times where you make a bunch of money in the night and you feel like you're on top of the world, but then a week later you get knocked down and you don't know how to come up from that. I think that through this whole journey, it's, it's all been a process of getting, going up the mountain and getting right back down to the bottom and I've been at some of my highest points and I've been at the, some of the lowest points. In the past, our team has worked with artists like Corella, Crisley, Rusco, but we've never had one at home. We've never had one set venue. And our goal is to take all these different big names and even branching out even farther and taking that all and just putting it into Tuxedo Junction, into Danbury and making this our new home. Aside from everything else, a lot of people aren't going to just be coming in here for the artist. We want to create an environment where it's, wow, I want to go to that venue. The old Tuxedo Junction in 20 years ago was awesome. People were coming here for the venue and you still hear stories from adults and friends of parents and everything about how great it was and people were coming for the actual venue. For the past five to ten years, it hasn't been like that, and we're bringing that back. Maybe not with the bands that people want to see, but with the artists that kids are going to go out and see. And we're going to bring people back. Whether someone doesn't like the artist that's playing that night, they're still going to come to our venue because of how awesome it is. We're going to be known as the venue that was awesome perfectionists on the lighting, the sound. We're down to every last detail. With the story, this is Mike Squires of NCC. The Chainsmokers, famous for their selfie song, was recently in town for a show. NCC News had the opportunity to sit down with the Chainsmokers and get a better understanding of their hit song. The Chainsmokers, composed of Drew Taggart and Alex Paul, had noticed how the word selfie had become a trend and they wanted to take advantage of it. They made a demo of the song containing monologue from a female clubber talking about a good selfie. Alex, one of the members of the Chainsmokers, says that honestly, selfie is a kind of a phenomenon for us. We made it and thought it was funny and put it out as an edit. Then Dim Mac, a record label owned by Steve Aoki, wanted to buy it. And they bought it from them. What makes this story even more amazing is the amount of attention this song has been getting. Recently, the video for Selfie on YouTube just hit over 250 million views. Wow. The duo recently released their new single entitled Kanye and is slowly climbing the charts. Hopefully, it'll do as well as the selfie. Our final story for tonight is about the Girl Scouts. What if you could order the cookies you adore and love online? Well, now it is possible. NCC News has the story. It will be easier than ever to buy Girl Scout cookies from now on. For the first time in Girl Scout history, the sweet treats will be sold online through a new national platform called Digital Cookie. This breaks tradition for the 112 year old organization. The Girl Scouts liked door to door sales because it was considered a learning experience for the young scouts, but the Girl Scouts realized the internet can also teach the girls valuable skills. Online sales of Girl Scout cookies will launch December 12th. The traditional cookie selling season begins in January. This is Mike Squires of NCC News. 
That's our edition of NCC News. Thank you for watching. I'm Nat Sandberg. And I'm Alex Ravello. Have a good day, everybody. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Next time on NCC News, we find out about a 13-year-old who keeps receiving letters for support. And Laurie Sutherland presents her project. Next time on NCC News, thanks for watching.